today. Okay, so I thought this would be of interest. So this thing that you're seeing right here is, wait, let me close these off. So this thing that you're seeing right here is pretty much your exogenous, this one, your exogenous estrogen caused by the pill. So every single time that you take one of those tablets. This down here, while you're on the pill, is your body's natural estrogen. So what you'll see looking at this over here is that your contraceptive inhibits these two hormones that get released from your pituitary, which bluntens your natural hormones. So this is your body's natural estrogen. That's the estrogen spikes from the pill and that's not natural. That is not natural. That's from the pill. Now you'll see here, when you take the seven days off, it starts to rise again. But the thing is, this is nowhere near where it should be. And then that's when you get the bleeding. It's not a period. You should never call it a period because if you are on the pill, you do not get a period ever. That is just bleeding. It is not a period. So that is something you need to remember. That is not a period. Now, you'll see here, that is, these first two ones here, progesterone, estrogen, these are natural without a pill. Now you'll see here, that's its highest in the luteal phase. And that's the lowest part. But you'll also see that here, where it's the highest here, it's still only just in line with the lowest part with your natural cycle. So it, it's not a real period. That's something to remember. And your hormones are bluntened. One more thing I want to show you is this. So menstrual cycle, these are the hormones. Then your hormones come down to pretty much dull, nothing. Hormonal contraceptive use. That's pretty much, that's what they call here secondary amenorrhea. And then pregnancy, you have higher than usual hormones. And then menopause, it's pretty much the same thing. Being on contraceptives and menopause. And then hormone replacement therapy. So it's very recommended that going when you're past the menopause stage to get yourself onto hormone replacement therapy as it's one of the keys to maintaining, you know, everything in good nick and reducing all the symptoms. But that's pretty much just what I wanted to talk about with the period and stuff. And the biggest thing is that there is no, there is no one way to approach a diet or training around this. So one thing to remember, this is what they wanted to show down here. Here, let me stop sharing the screen and bring you back to me. One thing to really remember is that you should never look at studies to tell you how to train around a cycle, how to eat on a cycle because none of it's accurate, none of it. A lot of the time, it's getting, it's that placebo, nocebo effect where it's saying, okay, so this is what I'm going to expect. And then all of a sudden you expect it because none of those studies, you can actually relate to any one person because everyone is so different. So I guess that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Like there's no, like 
women and men pretty much should train the same. There are a few differences, but very, very minimal. And the more trained you become as a female, the more similar you can pretty much have everything training like a mate. Like there is no real difference. There really isn't. Basics will always be basics. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, ask them. But I just wanted to, I wanted to share that with you.